Hello everyone, just to introduce myself, my name is Dennis Fancy and I'm from the Diocese of Newcastle, our generous giving team. It's a real pleasure to have this opportunity to talk to you online today, exploring the place generosity and indeed generous giving should play in our lives as Christians. Now the gospel reading we heard earlier is the story of an encounter with Jesus that I suspect many of us are very familiar with. We often refer to it as the story of the rich young ruler. He was clearly rich. The passage told us he had many possessions. And the fact that he was young and a ruler comes from the additional information in Matthew and Luke's account of the same incident. And most of all, we remember that he left Jesus very sad or sorrowful because much as he wanted to inherit eternal life, he simply wasn't willing to give away all his possessions. And to be honest, if you're anything like me, perhaps you think that Jesus was just a little harsh. I mean, this man had clearly kept all the commandments, which is more than many of us can say about ourselves. And if you're reading in Luke's Gospel, for instance, you only need to flick forward one chapter to find the story of Zacchaeus, who successfully makes it into the kingdom of God by only giving away half of what he had. If only Jesus could have been consistent and applied a level playing field. If Jesus had been willing to make the entry bar just half of your possessions, for instance, then maybe this young man we've just heard about would indeed have become a disciple and a very useful one too, since clearly he would have had quite a bit of money left, even after he'd given half of what he had away. So no wonder it's recorded that the disciples were a little bit perplexed, and they went on to ask Jesus, well, exactly who then can be saved? But you see, there's another key point to this encounter between Jesus and the young man, which we often overlook, it's found right at the beginning in verse 21. Before Jesus said anything to this man, the text simply records Jesus loved him. So you see, this is not a case of Jesus evaluating how much he could get out of this particular potential disciple. It's more of a case of Jesus seeing clearly what would be best for this person. And Jesus saw or understood that stood in front of him was a young person who needed to be released or set free from the hold money had over his life. Now, I want you to breathe easy because I'm not going to ask you to give all your money away or even half of it or 10% or indeed any specified proportion or amount. I believe that how much you give should be a private matter between you and God. But what I have discovered though in my own life, and I hope you've discovered it in yours, and if not, I invite you to start on that journey of discovery right now, and that's when we give away our money freely, hilariously, not under compulsion, not because someone's told us we must, but as a decision we've made because we want to give, then we are voluntarily releasing ourselves from the hold that money can have over our values and the choices we make and the way we prioritise things. Now Jesus actually admits this is quite difficult, more difficult perhaps for those of us who have a fair bit of money to start off with than it is for those of us who have very little. And there is a temptation for those of us who have money to rely on it for our financial security and our well-being and what we might need in the future and all that kind of stuff. Whereas people who don't have a lot to start off with tend not to rely on money in that way because they simply don't have any. So I said it's difficult, but not impossible. A camel can get through the eye of the needle, which I'm told is a phrase to use phrase used to describe a very small pedestrian gate in the city wall. 
and uh, a camel just has to have all its loads and burdens and everything it's carrying removed first. And it's the same for this rich young man. And it's the same for me. And it's the same for all of us. Nothing is impossible with God. So if you sense that maybe God is prompting you to give more to your local parish church, or even to start giving for the first time, before deciding what you're going to do, before perhaps even walking away, will you first pause and make sure you understand that whatever God is asking you to do, it's because Jesus loves you. Whatever we give should be based on that foundation. Because Jesus loves me, because I'm accepted by him, because I count myself as one of his disciples, because I want to be released from the hold that the pursuit of money can have over me and the desire to retain what money I've got and because I want to inherit eternal life. Now it may of course be the case that actually money doesn't have any hold over you at all and you're quite relaxed about giving some of it away to good causes. We know from our Anglican giving survey in 2020 that on the whole Anglicans are very generous people supporting all kinds of charities and good causes. But maybe you simply don't want to give any more to your local church. Perhaps you think it doesn't need it or it won't spend the money wisely. You might point out that in the passage We've just heard Jesus didn't ask the uh, the man to give money to him personally or into the disciples' kitty. He just said, give it to the poor. And if that's your thought, you would indeed be making an excellent point. In terms of being free from any hold money has over us, it doesn't matter too much where our money goes. But there's another aspect of financial giving I want to introduce And that is that we give as a way of expressing our commitment to something, our sense of being joined and being a partner in mission. So it's an opportune moment for each of us to ask ourselves some questions. First and foremost, am I a person of faith? Do I value the fact that I have reached a position in my life where I can say I'm a believer? And secondly, am I aware that Jesus loves me and he wants the very best for me? He doesn't want money to have a hold over my life. That's not to say that there's any objection to having money, just that it shouldn't rule us. And one way to break that bond is to give away some of our money freely, cheerfully and generously. And then Thirdly, do I value my local parish church and my diocese? Am I pleased to be part of it? Am I committed to playing my part in ensuring that the parish I'm part of can fulfil its ministry and mission objectives to which it has been called? Now, I said earlier, it's not for me nor indeed anyone to tell you how much you should be giving to your local church. I I believe that's a personal and private decision between you and God. But I do encourage you to think about it. Meditate on the fact that we are created in the image of a generous God called to reflect his image and character in every way. And that means it's part of our calling, part of our faith to be generous ourselves and to give freely and cheerfully. Thank you so much for listening to me today. It's been a pleasure to have had this opportunity to share with you through this video. God bless every one of you. Amen.